Hey everyone, Ryan from U Bike Escape, and in this video, we're checking out the ultra affordable $727 Mac Wheel Mac Mission. So let's get into the review. Before we get started with the walk around, if you are looking to purchase a Mac Wheel Mac Mission 100, please consider using the link in the description before completing your purchase as it helps me continue to make videos like this one. Appreciate the support. I will also have links to our electric bike accessories list, our top e-bike brands page, and finally our electric bike discounts code page where I track the latest deals on electric bikes. With that, let's get into the walk around. Here it is, the Mac Wheel Mac Mission 100. As we're going through the walk around on this electric bike, keep in mind that this is currently priced at $726.99. It is by far the most affordable electric bike that I have reviewed. All right, let's start up here in the front with these wheels, 27 and a half by 1.75. Metro Elite is the brand, not a brand that I am familiar with. You can see that these are definitely set up for street riding, not a whole lot of tread on them. And you can see a little bit of Mac wheel branding right there on the wheel and on the front fork. We have a rigid front fork here. And one thing that I wanna point out is that this still is a quick release. Sometimes on these more affordable bikes, you'll find bolt-on axles. So I like that it comes with a quick release. Also, this bike is lighter, so you can potentially take that front wheel off and put this bike in the back of your vehicle much more easily. We've got 160 millimeter disc rotors there, and we have unbranded mechanical disc brakes here. And I wouldn't say they're as nice, of course, as the name brand, but I have been testing this bike out over the last few days quite a bit, and they do stop the bike just fine, though the feel just isn't quite there compared to some of the more name brand, like Tektro, for instance, that I see on electric bikes, all the way up from $1,000 to even more than that. And the bike does come with front and rear fenders. I personally don't prefer the way that these look, but it is an additional accessory that they do include. It kind of sticks up there into the front fork and expands to lock it in place. They're just made out of plastic. They do flop around a little bit and you can see the rear one there attached to the seat post. Again, this bike would look a lot cleaner without these on, but I wanted to put them on so I could show you what this bike comes with. And here's a closer look at the cable management up here on the front of the bike. So internally routed cables, definitely a bit of a surprise on such an affordable electric bike. You can see they actually go in on the left and the right side of the bike. So it's a pretty clean look. And then they come out the bottom of the down tube right there. And I should note talking about the frame a little bit here, this is a mid-step electric bike, which is definitely nice if you're looking for a bike that's gonna be a little bit easier for you to put your leg on. Of course, it fits me fine as well, and I'm six feet tall. In the riding footage, I'll share my wife hopping on this electric bike so you can get an idea of how a shorter person might sit on this electric bike. Moving on to the cockpit of the electric bike. You can see unbranded brake levers, nothing fancy here. Again, super affordable. It does have the motor cutoff, so as soon as you hit the brake, left or right, so front or rear, it's going to kill power to that motor. A nice safety feature. Pretty simple grips here. And then it does come with a backlit LCD screen. We'll see if we can see this in the daylight here. It's the KD58C. So pedal assist levels from one to five. And you can see there's a battery meter up top, top left, and current miles per hour, 
trip mileage, odometer, ride time, average speed, and max speed, and then back to miles per hour. So nice that they include a display that gives you all the information that you need, nice and small. This is actually our cell phone mount that does not come with this electric bike, but you can check this out on our electric bike accessories list. Moving on to the right side, so this has a right hand twist grip throttle. This is actually a throttle I haven't seen before. Of course, I've used other twist grip throttles, but this one is a little bit different. Feels just fine, gets the job done, and it kind of matches with these grips. One thing I wanted to point out is with the throttle and the pedal assist, they don't play nicely together. And what I mean by that is, for instance, if you're in pedal assist one, pedaling along, and then you decide you want more throttle, you aren't going to feel that additional power until you actually stop pedaling. So it seems that this is a different way compared to many electric bikes because normally, no matter what pedal assist level you're in, and you hit that throttle, you're gonna feel the additional power. So just something to keep in mind with this electric bike. As far as shifting goes, we have the Shimano thumb shifter. Seven speeds, nice that they went with a name brand, really like that instead of a no name brand. This actually works pretty well. I prefer trigger shifters, but this is a component that you'll find on electric bikes well into the $1,000 price point. So not a bad component and these shifters get the job done just fine. And you can see up front, these are pretty flat handlebars. So if you wanted a little bit of adjustability, you could put an adjustable stem there. You can see we do have the Mac wheel branding on there. And of course, Mac Mission 100. The battery is also branded. And then you have the Mac wheel down there at the bottom of the down tube. As far as the battery goes, this is a 36 volt 13 amp hour system. Again, pretty impressive capacity when you consider the price. There is an on off switch right here and it does have a cover. It does have more of a four pin system for connecting the charger and the charger is a four amp charger which I believe is the first four amp charger that I've seen that comes with an electric bike. That basically means that your bike is going to charge up much faster than the two amp chargers, obviously twice as fast. So that's really nice if you wanna get a quick charge. It's not going to take a long time to fill this battery up. Of course, there is a reason that many electric bikes come with slower charges, but probably not gonna notice a huge difference in battery degradation over time with the four amp. Other companies sell this as a more premium accessory as well. And on the other side of the battery, there is a battery meter. So if I push this button here, you can see that one red light, the battery actually doesn't have a whole lot of charge left. And the battery does come unlocked from the frame. Turn the key and simply remove that battery. There's the cradle that it sits in. And to put it back on, simply slide it in and turn the key. There actually aren't many things when you're looking at this electric bike that give it away as such an affordable bike, but you will notice that these cranks are just a little bit more narrow, perhaps not as beefy as some of the cranks that you'll find on other affordable electric bikes. So just something that when you see this electric bike, you can tell that this is a more affordable component that they put on this to keep the price down. These are the pedals that come with the Mac Mission. These pedals actually remind me of my childhood. I would definitely consider putting something else on here, especially if you're worried about hitting your shins because they're definitely going to get hurt with these spikes on these pedals. So something you could look at upgrading if you'd like. Moving on to the kickstand, it is out of the way of the pedals, which is nice has a little bit of a pad to help it in soft grass such as this, and it is adjustable. Going to get the job done, and here is a quick look at the rear disc brakes and that 350 watt Vinca motor. Again, not a brand that I'm familiar with. And there are mounting points on the back of the frame, so it looks like you could potentially put a rear rack here with these mounts both here as well as towards the back here. 
All right, and here is that rear derailleur. Again, they went with Shimano, really like that Shimano Turney TZ seven speed shifter. Again, a common component you'll find on many electric bikes. Shimano Turney is kind of the most basic model that Shimano offers, but again, shifts just fine. And on electric bikes, you'll actually find that you're shifting a little bit less because you can adjust the power if needed. We actually ride many of our electric bikes in the highest gear. And it also has a Shimano freewheel, 14 to 28 tooth. Up front here, you'll see a single walled chain ring. Not surprising, but I do like the double walled ones. They just offer a little bit more protection. And there's even a little protective tape here on the back of the chainstay to help keep the frame looking nice with the chain slap. And you can see more of the cables coming in both for the motor as well as the rear derailleur coming from underneath the bike. I find that the seat is pretty firm about what you can expect on such an affordable electric bike. If you're looking for something more comfortable, be sure to check out our electric bike accessories list as there's tons of options if you're looking for something with a little bit more comfort. Usually they're a bit wider as well. All right, that completes the walk around. Let's get to some first person riding footage. I'll talk about the various pedal assist levels. I'll show you zero to 20 with the throttle. And then I'll take this bike up the large hill that I take up all of our electric bikes on. Uh, we'll start off here, throttle only. Here we go, three, two, one, go. We got the GPS speed on my phone. You can likely see that. Speedometer app by Coolnix. There is 20 miles per hour and 21 it looks like. And then it goes back down to 20. So class two electric bike with that throttle top speed, 20 miles per hour. Okay, now let's talk about the pedal assist levels. As always, I have it in the highest gear. So seventh gear on this electric bike and then I adjust the speeds as needed, of course, unless we go up hills. Then usually it's nice to have some of those other gears, but I would say I'm pedaling at a leisurely pace, going about 12 miles per hour. Let's go ahead and maybe take a right here. Let's go ahead and go into pedal assist two mode. Going about 13 miles an hour. Fifteen. All right, and then I will go up to pedal assist three here. Nice to have that throttle to get started a little bit at stop signs. There's pedal assist three. All the way up to 15, 16, 17 miles an hour. Okay, and then we'll go in pedal assist four here. And that should likely take us to the top speed, 20 miles an hour. Of course, we'll see if we can get any faster than that. Again, I'm not working too hard right now. Actually, my legs are starting to spin quite a bit. So I think pedal assist three is likely kind of the sweet spot for us. You can see 20 miles an hour. Let's go ahead and go into pedal assist five and see if we can get it any faster. I'm guessing not because the motor is just going to stop helping. And I think that's it. And I do get the question quite a bit, can you ride this electric bike with no pedal assist at all? So I turn pedal assist off, say your battery dies, Say the battery stops working for some reason. Now this is a lighter bike, so I'm still in seventh gear. Not working too terribly hard, 11 miles per hour. Not terrible. Of course I could shift down if I wanted to. So I would say comfortably 11, 12 miles an hour. Of course hills are gonna be a little bit more of a challenge. 
but hopefully that helps you get a better idea of what to expect. All right, so I have my wife here, Allie, on the RAD mission, and we have the MAC mission, so two very similarly named electric bikes. And I know the question is going to come up, what bike is faster, what motor is faster? 500 watt peak on the RAD mission and 350 watt on the MAC mission. And not sure what that peak's at. My wife is pregnant, so she does weigh a little bit more than me. So we'll just see how this goes. We'll line up and we'll go throttle only. And we'll go three, two, one, throttle. All right, ready? Here we go, three, two, one, throttle. Mac mission off to an early start. Wow. I'm going full throttle. Okay, well maybe we should switch. Okay, now we are going to switch bikes because the Mac Mission 100 did pull ahead. And now Allie's on that bike. The Rad Mission does have baskets and a rack and a basket in the back. So it does have additional weight as well. So something to keep in mind. But now let's do a throttle only and we'll see what happens. Ready? Three, two, one, throttle. So I would say the Rad Mission definitely has a slower start and clearly the Mac mission is more powerful. Okay so now let's get to the hill climb test and I'll share with you just how capable this motor is going up steep hills. All right unfortunately it has started raining but this is the hill that I take up all of our electric bikes that we review. This is going to be the throttle only test and I'm going to try to do this quickly because of the rain and I don't want to leave my phone out too long. Also, hopefully the rain isn't impacting too much the GoPro. This is actually the new GoPro 10, which has a special lens that's supposed to wick away water. So we'll see how this works. All right, going about 18, the hill is just about to start And uh, 16, 15. So yeah, just a big shout out to everyone who's been watching my videos for a while. Uh, makes it possible to, for me to buy a GoPro like this. I'll everyone support using the links in the description before you make your purchase. So I really appreciate that. I uh, recently was able to get this GoPro. So 4K footage, uh, which has been fun. Looks better, obviously. All right, going about nine miles an hour. I'm assuming we might go down maybe to eight, but we'll see. And it's not gonna make it up this hill very fast, but uh, it's going to make it, oh, back up to 10. And I did have the battery almost charged. I see I am down one bar. Again, 350 watt motor. All right, I guess it's gonna hold me steady at 10. The display seems pretty accurate with that speed. And we're just getting to the point where the hill's about to plane off. So again, not something I would recommend you do with this bike. Take it up a steep hill, throttle only. Of course, it's gonna drain your battery pretty quickly, uh, but good to know that it's possible. This is one of the steepest hills in the city I live in, so I know I won't have to worry. Now I'm going to head back down the hill and we'll do some pedaling as well, various pedal assist levels and I'll give you a little bit better idea of what you can do pedaling in the various modes up a steep hill. All right, it is really coming down now. I had to put the cell phone away. Uh, didn't want to do any damage to that, but I will try to read the speed on the screen, which seemed pretty accurate with the GPS. Uh, give it a little throttle to get started here. 
Uh, let's go into pedal assist one to start here. And uh, let's see, fifth gear. Definitely working a little bit here. Let's go ahead and shift down. Three. I think in pedal assist one, I could even go lower here. Maybe first gear. Yeah, so still doing a bit of work, I would say. Pedal assist one, eight miles an hour. Let's go ahead and go to pedal assist two. I feel like the pedal assist levels going into each one, the power delivery is pretty smooth. I don't find that going from two to three gives you like a huge jump or anything like that. So that's nice. Still going about six, seven miles an hour as the hill started. Let's go ahead and go into pedal assist three. Again, still in first gear, still doing some work. So I'd say if I was tackling this hill, I'm thinking pedal assist four, maybe even five. Now my legs are starting to spin a little bit more. I think I can shift up to two, maybe even three here, going about 10, 11. I think this is pretty comfortable for me here. Third gear, pedal assist four. Let's go ahead and go into pedal assist five here. And obviously we are also doing a little bit of a rain test on this bike. All right, uh, 12 miles an hour. I think I could shift up to four. And going about 13. Getting close to 15, or sorry, 14. So yeah, I think steep hills like this definitely want to be in third, fourth, maybe fifth gear because it is a smaller motor. And that's pretty much for the hill. Okay, with that, let's get into some third person riding footage and I will give you my final thoughts on the Mac Wheel Mac Mission 100. I'm not going to say this is a better e-bike than others I've reviewed, it's not, but the Mac Wheel Mac Mission 100 is also priced significantly lower than any other electric bike that I've reviewed. It stands in a class of its own and to be honest, it's at a price point that I was a little apprehensive to even review for you, my audience. It's currently priced at $726.99 and you can get an additional $10 off if you use the link in the description appreciate your support. So without a doubt, if you're looking at this e-bike, it's because of that price. And that price sure is attractive. And if you're looking for an e-bike that will perhaps replace car trips or just get you out and enjoy the outdoors, it's hard to beat. The motor, again, when you consider the price is actually pretty powerful and getting to 20 miles per hour is not difficult. The throttle is always there if you need it, of course. The 36 volt, 13 amp hour or 468 watt hour battery is actually a pretty decent size and I've been enjoying the 4 amp fast charger since I'm usually not the most reliable at keeping our batteries topped off. The shifter and derailleur are some of the ones that you'll find on e-bikes into the $1,000 range and the brakes, while unbranded, will definitely get you to a stop. Perhaps the brakes might be one component worth upgrading down the line once you need to replace your brake pads. I would personally replace the pedals with some flatter pedals and add front and rear rechargeable lights for added safety. I'd ditch the fenders for something a little bit more aesthetically pleasing to match the cool look of the bike if you're planning to ride in all conditions. Besides the black, it also comes in white with blue accents, which looks sharp. I like the internal cable routing and I think Mac Wheel was smart to go with this mid-step design to make it more accessible. I'm 6 feet tall and my wife is 5 foot 5 and we've been both taking turns on the Mac Mission 100. Plus the bike weighs just over 48 pounds, about what I'd expect for this style of bike. But this makes it easier to handle, perhaps put on a bike rack or even in the back of your vehicle compared to other electric bikes in the 60 or even 70 pound range. Now this is my first experience with Mac Wheel, so it might be worth doing further research on their customer service, or perhaps other owners can chime in in the comments section below. You really have to look close at this e-bike because to me it doesn't scream cheap e-bike. Sure there are going to be minor trade-offs here and there if you decide to spend say $270 or more and buy one of the many $1000 electric bikes. 
Overall, I'm still happy I agreed to do this review and I'm a huge proponent of getting more people out on electric bikes. So if it's the price point that tips the scale for you, then I say go for it. I hope you enjoyed this one. Let me know what you think of the Mac Wheel Mac Mission 100 in the comment section below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.